Well, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mohammed for the kind invitation. So I will uh, tell you uh, something about uh, so some work that uh, I'm doing on dissipative uh, phase transition. I should be more precise. It's, uh, I'm referring especially to uh, dissipative transition in synthetic many body uh, system. And uh, so before I, I start, otherwise I will forget, I should acknowledge work I've, that I've been doing on this topic uh, with several different collaborators, uh, people in uh, Pisa and in Trieste, and then groups with uh, uh, Michael Hartmann uh, uh, in Edinburgh, Jonathan Keeling, uh, Hakan Tureci, and uh, Cristiano in Paris, and Jacopo uh, Carosotto uh, in Trento. So I'm, uh, I will, uh, part of my presentation is, uh, <coughs> uh, is about some uh, unpublished work and I'm slightly nervous because uh, I, we just resubmitted the, it's somewhat related to time crystals. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is that we just resubmitted the, the answer to the referee yesterday. And two years ago I was in a similar situation and after two weeks we got this, the second round and said, um, originally I thought this was a good paper, but then I heard the talk by Fazio at the conference <laughs> and I changed my mind. <laughs> so, I mean, despite of what I'm going to say, just uh, read the paper and uh, <laughs> if you are one of the referees, okay. <laughs> good, so. I will talk about phase transitions, and uh, so I don't need to, to make this introduction too long, but I will uh, mostly be concerned with situation in which the system, the many body system, is coupled to an external environment, but differently from the case of, say, thermal phase transition or quantum phase transition, where uh, I drive the system through the critical to, to the transition point either by changing the temperature or by changing at zero temperature some uh, uh, coupling constant in the, in the Hamiltonian of the system. Here, the, uh, the, the transition between some ordered state of some sort and uh, disordered state is driven by changing in some way the coupling between the system and uh, the system and some external uh, environment. At that point, can you replace it by the source? Sorry? The coupling to the environment is what gives you the order to disorder. Yeah. Can you replace the function of the environment by some noise? Some classical noise. Some classical noise, you mean? Oh, no, no, no. yes, yes, yes. Yes. So uh, before I presenting um, the, the, the thing I'm doing, so let, let me <coughs> give you a little bit of history because uh, people have been working on uh, dissipative phase transition in uh, synthetic matter since uh, I, I would, the 90s. And uh, I think that the first system where uh, those type of uh, uh, problems were studied are uh, where Josephson Junction arrays. This is just uh, a picture I took from uh, the, I think that the, the, the original sample where Hans Moy uh, in Delft managed to study a quantum phase transition uh, superconductor insulator by just changing uh, the couplings in the system. This I think was the first uh, example of uh, many body phase transition. I mean, this is kind of the ancestor of what we would call quantum simulators. I mean, this was really static equilibrium, but uh, the idea was uh, nobody thought about simulator at that time, but it's somewhat related. So th these experiments were done in the late 80s, and uh, uh, then it took a, a while, so roughly 10 years, where, and then some people really managed to, to, to make uh, some uh, more complex uh, uh, devices to study the CBADI phase transitions in Josephson Junction system. And the I mean, the two, I mean, two experiments come from 
uh, Japanese group of Kobayashi and uh, the group of uh, John Ka Clark in Berkeley. And so uh, the, the, the dissipation was introduced artificially uh, in different ways. So just let me give you uh, a brief sketch because I think it's interesting uh, how they did it. So in the case of uh, uh, Clark's experiment, so essentially the, the Josephson arrays was built up on top of a two-dimensional yeah, electron gas. And then by changing essentially the resistance of the two-dimensional electron gas, they could tune essentially the, so in a sense what you said, the, say the noise level which act on the, on the Josephson arrays. So the construction of the, the experiments uh, in Japan was more complex. Uh, it, in a sense, was kind of brute force. They really realized a chain of Josephson junction where they put uh, in parallel to each junction a normal, uh, a normal resistor. So the, in this sense, they had to do several samples, just changing somewhat the properties of the resistor. So, I will not uh, go in, uh, uh, in any details of these uh, experiments. So let me say that, for instance, here, they just saw that by changing the resistance of the two deck, they managed to see uh, a changing in the IV curves of the Josephson arrays from superconducting to insulators. So, so this was an example in which uh, the, the transition was induced uh, by the environment. Now, uh, I mean, for some time, uh, nothing really happened at the experimental level. I would say that since uh, several years, there is now a kind of new twist on, uh, on, uh, on the topic, and uh, especially because there are really a variety of uh, new systems where these uh, problems can be studied. I mean, here I just list some examples of this sort. So optical lattice where you can engineer dissipation by, for instance, uh, coupling to some BC bath or uh, BC cavities, just, uh, sorry, cavity arrays. And these are just a uh, uh, few examples. And I would say that uh, if you compare to this very old experiment, I think that what, what is really interesting is that there is uh, much more control on, uh, on the properties of the system and especially also on the properties and coupling uh, of the bus. So without going in any details on each experimental realization, then uh, all those systems can be uh, essentially roughly uh, describes in theoretical terms by looking at uh, the dynamics governed by kind of Lindblad, uh, uh, mm, Lindblad equation, where there is one term which is associated to the unitary evolution. Uh, so the Hamiltonian H is the one which uh, governs the unitary part, the coherent part. And uh, <coughs> there is some coupling to the bus, which can be uh, described by some Lindbladian of some sort. So for the moment, it's not really uh, important to, to uh, specify the Lindbladian. And then the idea is very simple. If you have those two terms in the, uh, in the dynamical equation, say that for simplicity, we can characterize by some risk coupling constants, G and, and alpha, then uh, in the steady state, depending on the uh, values of those parameters, then some ordering may uh, appear. And so uh, essentially by looking at the properties of the steady state, I can distinguish some, yes? Uh, yes, approach. yes. So, is there, are they equivalent? I don't think they are equivalent. So, 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 in, the, in, those, so in, those, uh, in those early 
Uh, in those early theoretical uh, works, essentially it was always assumed that the system and the bus are in thermal equilibrium. And so you can write down uh, an effective, so a, a partition function for all. So then you integrate the, bu the, the bus and then you get kind of imaginary uh, action for a la caldera leg, depending on the type of. Uh, is there a right approach and wrong approach? No, no, I think that there are different. I, I would say that uh, in those systems where, for instance, you have photon losses, then. But you can write, I mean, uh, so I'm just using this lean blood. Uh, so you, equivalent, you can use uh, Kaldish and you will get exactly the same. So lean, lean blood is just a way for me to present things. But No, no, I'm, I'm referring, sorry, no, no, I'm referring to the fact that uh, this uh, originally, this phase transition in Josephson arrays were studied mostly by looking at uh, imaginary uh, time. That was a long time, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was referring to Kurt and Leggett. And also with the lint lab, you won't be able to do, uh, you are restricted to local. With the Lindblad, I'm restricted to Markov. Uh, yes, yes, I'm using Lindblad because those systems that I mentioned are very well described in this term. So I'm not saying that this is a general formulation. Uh -huh. so, so you're restricting your attention to yeah. those systems that is susceptible to Lindblad. Yes. Lindblad. Now, Lindblad, this type of dynamics can also be re formulated using Keldish. Okay, that's what I was saying. But, but like actually, Lindblad can, in some situation, describe a non-local map and also a non-local map. map. I said non-local dissipation. Ah, okay. So at this level, I'm not specifying what is L. So in principle, uh, it's everything. So, but you are right. Uh, in the next slides, I'm going to use the Lindblad form, and then uh, I'm um, okay. specifying. To lock. I'm going to consider only local and Markovian case. Okay, so. Uh, so, and if I use the same uh, type of uh, kind of uh, reasoning, uh, if in a quantum, trans uh, quantum phase transition, let's say all the action takes place uh, due to the competition of two different terms in the, in the Hamiltonian, say H0 and H1, they do not commute, then here I'm going to uh, study a uh, uh, transition which arises because of the competition between the unitary and the dissipative uh, and the dissipative uh, part. Okay, so uh, why to study? I mean, in addition to the fact that uh, uh, there are several uh, systems where this applies, so there are uh, uh, several reasons to to look at this type, this type of problems. So the, the system we are going to consider, I'm going to consider are uh, uh, non-equilibrium system and the steady state phase diagram uh, is rather rich. I mean, and new phases that uh, do, are not present in equilibrium can emerge. And I will try to give uh, some uh, example uh, or, um, some, some example of this. And uh, there have been uh, several reviews devoted uh, to uh, the topic. One aspect which is very important that I'm going to not touch at all is the fact that uh, due to the presence of the uh, environment, the critical behavior itself can, is modified. So uh, critical exponents, uh, uh, and universality, uh, sorry, universality class of the, the, the transition 
can change. And here, uh, on this topic, there's been uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of works that uh, uh, address uh, uh, this issue. So I will not, uh, I will not discuss uh, at all this, uh, this very interesting uh, problem. What I'm going to discuss are few properties of uh, transition induced by uh, environment, which somewhat, in my opinion, have uh, uh, kind of uh, peculiar, uh, some peculiarities and they do not uh, appear in uh, equilibrium phase transition. So I will uh, essentially uh, tell you about uh, three different aspects which uh, I think are pretty uh, strange. So I will talk about short range physics and the Seabody phase transition, something which I would say in standard equilibrium phase transition are, um, I mean, it's not really uh, super exciting. I will uh, tell you about uh, uh, the nature of correlation. So if you allow me this oversimplification, so in a sense, if you look at the thermal uh, phase transition, then kind of classical correlation are important and quantum fluctuation are totally irrelevant. On the other side, if you look at quantum fluctuation, <coughs> obviously, uh, sorry, uh, quantum phase transition, obviously, since you are at zero temperature, only quantum fluctuations are important. Now, I will give you some evidence that dissipative transition, even if in some cases, and I'm considering those cases, the universality class is uh, of a thermal-like transition. Uh, nevertheless, the properties of uh, thermal and quantum fluctuations behave in a kind of uh, intermediate way. And the last part, I will talk about uh, the possibility to get uh, limit cycle in this system, and I will try to con connect uh, these limit cycles to, to some form of uh, uh, time crystal. So let me give you uh, just a flash uh, of all these uh, uh, three topics. And uh, for the first two, so short range physics and fluctuation, I will consider a model that uh, is uh, an X, Y, Z Hamiltonian, so it's short range uh, spin one half system in a, say, in a square lattice with the, the coupling constant different in all three directions, coupled to a local bath, Markovian, <coughs> which just uh, relaxes the spin to the, to the down, uh, um, to the down uh, position locally. Okay, so this model was, as far as I know, studied for the first time uh, in this uh, uh, in this work by Lee Gopal Gopalakrishnan and Lukin. So uh, they look at uh, mean field uh, phase diagram in the steady state that appear to be uh, pretty uh, complicated. So. What they indicate as a paramagnetic uh, phase is the phase in which all the spin are pointing down, okay? And uh, so there are several different phases, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic, or some incommensurate spin density wave uh, appear as a function of the different couplings. Now, I remind you that gamma is the, uh, the coupling constants cup, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the dissipation and J's are the exchange coupling. Now, in order to uh, try to convey what I want to say about short range physics, let me consider only a small part of this phase diagram, namely this one. Now, uh, so just look uh, here uh, at this stripe here in which uh, Mean field uh, will tell you that JY, so if you change JY, here is plot from zero to four, but you can go to essentially, so it, this ferromagnetic phase will extend up to essentially infinity, okay? So 
Inf the, uh, equal infinity is a singular point, but essentially is the whole region of a row, uh, magnetic uh, phase along uh, the plane. Okay, and this is what I expand here up to 20. Okay, now uh, if you go just slightly beyond the mean field, then there are several uh, ways to do it. Uh, so we did it by doing uh, several cluster like calculation, but then essentially the same uh, result was uh, confirmed by Horus and collaborators using uh, MPO. And then you could just go beyond and include uh, uh, the role, I mean, the, the effect of short range fluctuation, then uh, the ferromagnetic phase shrink by, shrinks by order of magnitude. I really would like to emphasize here that we are not talking about just corrections, but uh, we are talking about several order of magnitude in which uh, there is uh, this type of renormalization and really the accurate uh, taking into account of short range fluctuations uh, is responsible to give a uh, phase diagram. And indeed, for instance, this phase end up, end, ends up uh, in, uh, in a kind of uh, a small lobe. So this type of uh, overwhelming uh, uh, importance of uh, short range uh, fluctuations is not something uh, which uh, um, as far as I know, I do find in, uh, in equilibrium uh, phase transition. So then let me go further and try to analyze a little bit in more details the transition, uh, say, along here. So I will show you some cuts along, uh, so it fix Jx by changing Jy, okay? And then I'm considering a transition here, okay? And, uh, I'm not interested really in looking at uh, uh, critical exponents. So the critical exponent by following analysis by Sebastian Dill and collaborators tell you that for this system are on the same uh, universality class of uh, say the thermal uh, icing transition. So, but uh, the question that we wanted to uh, uh, look uh, is uh, if, uh, so this exhausts all our um, uh, understanding of, uh, so this is uh, just like an effectively, effectively thermal system, there is something uh, more. Oops, sorry, I, I forgot to say something, but then I will skip this uh, because otherwise it gets. Okay, so as I said, the steady, uh, the steady state is not pure in general, okay? So something which we can look at is uh, the entropy of the steady state, okay? But here, so I just look at the entropy as a function of uh, Jy. Now, if I take, so the, the entropy is just the entropy of the state. So if I take the derivative, this is work which we did using a, so in collaboration with Cristiano Ciuti using a method, uh, numerical method developed by, by them. So if you look at the derivative of the density, oh sorry, of the entropy as a function of uh, the coupling, this is like kind of uh, having some uh, connection with like uh, the derivative of the entropy in a classical phase transition with res respect to temperature. Then you see that, I mean, we have data up to five by five. We, now we improved even more the, the result, but then you see that the, the transition, then you get that there is a, a divergence. Well, there is a peak, and uh, this hints at some uh, anomalous behavior, uh, like uh, in a classical <coughs> phase transition. And with some wishful thinking, we can also fit with the uh, with the right exponent, but I think this is too much, uh, I mean, stretching the, the data, so I will not go in this, uh, in this. 
But what I think is interesting is that this is not the end of the story, because uh, if it was just a simple uh, classical transition, then quantum correlation would not uh, have any particular anomalous behavior. Now, there are several ways to characterize uh, entanglement. What we did was just to look at uh, Fisher information. So Fisher information essentially uh, is related to uh, the variance of single site operators that you can prove uh, as being as a good witness of uh, entanglement in the system. Okay, so. Fish uh, information uh, scaling with n uh, with, uh, with a value larger than 1 tells you that uh, the system has kind of uh, at least bipartite uh, entanglement. Now, you see that if you look at, uh, at, at the Fisher information, say, uh, so entanglement, then uh, there is an anomalous behavior. So there is a divergence again in the same point where the transition, of course. So in a sense, uh, this is telling you that uh, the, this dissipative transition has shared some properties which are of a kind of effective uh, classical system where kind of effective temperature is somewhat related to gamma, but at the same time, it's not purely, yes? Can you help me understand what you mean by divergence here? About? No, no, this is not divergence. I mean, this yeah, yeah. is, uh, I mean. So this is illustrating the, the other element. Oh, so I was looking for something in that no, no, graph. No, 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 no. So there is no divergence here. So. Uh, what is the divergence that you talked about? <coughs> the last word just like. No, no, I, I'm saying that there is a peak which is with the increase with the number of sites. Sorry, if you look at this. Uh, uh, now we had also calculation five by five. You see that this peak is going up. So I, I, I misuse the word divergence. I mean, our numerical data point that there is a peak which increased with the number of uh, sites okay. with some scaling. Okay. Okay. I mean, but so far, going from two to three to four, it looks like it's saturating. No, no, no. Sorry. We we have also five by five, and then uh, it scales. Yes. It's bigger. Yes. So that's. This is, uh, so this is <coughs> what we can do at most now. So I'm not claiming that we have uh, a, a complete evidence. What, what I want to say is, well, complete evidence. I mean, well, I'm claiming essentially what is shown here. Uh, that is that uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, peak which diverges exactly at the same point at the transition. Now, uh, meaning that also entanglement may play a role, okay? That, that is more as, safe. Could I say maybe differently that yeah. as you make it bigger, there's more entanglement? Uh, like in other words, it's not like some short range thing. But oh, no, no, sorry, but yes, but this is the fish. So you see, this is a, the per site. Now, uh, Fisher density tells you that if it's equal to k, it means that there is k plus one entanglement. So, yeah. Yes? So, does the Fisher uh, information always scale similarly as the uh, entanglement entropy if you were to look No, 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 no. Fisher, no. Uh, so, <coughs> Fisher information, so, so let me say that Fisher information, so, so first of all, entanglement entropy here cannot be used because uh, the system is not pure. Yeah. So if you compute a partition, then the entropy of the partition does not tell you anything about the entanglement. Fisher is uh, uh, a witness of entanglement, so you can show that any for any separable single site state, this quantity cannot be larger than one. But you mentioned that uh, it's equal to the variance. In a mixed state, it's not equal to the variance, right? 
No, no, it's, yes, you're right. It's more complicated, so it's sorry, yes. But it's, uh, sorry, in a mixed state, uh, so it is related to a kind of susceptibility, okay? Just to be. Okay, so to, to, to summarize this, um, uh, uh, this, so, I mean, something which we are uh, keeping uh, to study is try to understand to which extent, I mean, uh, to which extent, uh, so if you look at the, this system, uh, so if you take the, the, those work by, by DL and co-workers, then you find all the classical uh, exponent, but nevertheless there is kind of quantumness, which seems to be relevant uh, at the transition. So this was, uh, so I have 10 more minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this was, uh, so I, I want to, so I wanted to give you two examples where there are, I think, kind of uh, specific properties uh, of dissipative uh, transition which uh, uh, emerge. Uh, the last uh, example, so the, the, the last uh, uh, case I want to consider is uh, related to the fact that in many of the models, I mean, not only the one uh, I showed um, uh, before, so in many cases, so in some cases, it may happen that the steady state uh, is ordered, so there is a macroscopic parameter which appears, but uh, this uh, macroscopic ordering, so in the steady state, uh, so it's not constant, but it, there is a limit cycle. So the, the, if you compute, say, I don't know, the magnetization in some direction, uh, in some cases uh, is not uh, just uh, constant, but shows some uh, oscillating uh, behavior. So this, at, uh, in some uh, approximate forms, was uh, seen in several different models of optomechanical arrays, uh, cavity arrays, spin system, Rydberg atoms, and uh, well, so what we think is that this, or what we claim is that uh, this uh, situation is related to a form of uh, time crystal, which we call boundary, but uh, this is just a name, I'll tell you what uh, I mean. And so here I don't really need to say anything about time crystals. I should say something. Okay, so I should I'll just say uh, one slide apart. Okay, okay. So I'm just entering. Uh, okay. Probably it was the wrong choice of the talk, right? <laughs> okay, so um, so Vilcek uh, came out with this question on. Uh, uh, on the possibility to have uh, uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of time translational uh, invariants. So this was, uh, I think, uh, around 2013. Uh, and there has been a kind of uh, uh, discussion about uh, how to define uh, time crystals. So I think that uh, this definition comes from uh, a paper by uh, Watanabe and Oshikawa that uh, gave uh, this type of uh, essentially definition. So you have a local order parameter phi and uh, look at correlations in the thermodynamic limit and this correlation should oscillate. So at the same time, if you use this, uh, this definition, they formulate a kind of no-go theorem that tells that uh, this never occur in equilibrium. So zero temperature on or in thermal equilibrium, at least for local systems. So they 
no go theorem does not apply for um, uh, for long range system so then uh, it came the discussion about uh, uh, if it was possible it is if it's possible to see uh, this uh, time translation and symmetry breaking and uh, well one should go at uh, in non equilibrium and uh, so a natural choice was to look for time periodic uh, Hamiltonian system uh, where the symmetry, so the breaking of the symmetry is discrete and the idea is that, okay, you have uh, a system uh, which, whose dynamic is, uh, is a time periodic uh, Hamiltonian, then uh, uh, essentially you look for the sum observable, the system that will not obey the same uh, periodicity, but kind of, so they, 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 they have periodicity at multiple periods. This has been the work of uh, Floquet time crystals of uh, uh, these papers. And uh, um, with the consequence, experimental realization here and uh, in the group of uh, Misha, uh, Misha Lukin. Okay. Uh, good. So, how to relate? So, the, 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 I mean, various various, various questions uh, I would like to pose. So, first of all, uh, how to relate the limit cycle, the dimension, uh, uh, to the idea of having uh, time crystals, and uh, um, there is another thing that probably I would like to mention is that if you consider periodic system, then you have this problem of heating, and then, for instance, in this uh, uh, first realization, say, uh, uh, this order was important. Now, I will concentrate on so what, what we think about this connection to, uh, <coughs> to limit cycle. Now, if you take just, uh, and, and this why, I mean, essentially, we are, but I, mean, I have the feeling that, uh, uh, so if there is the referee is not present, I'm, so I'm just I'm just oscillating between saying something obvious and something. Well, I never touch the idea that I'm saying something wrong, but it may be also the case. But okay, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, so you can always see in a Hamiltonian system. This I think we will all, we, we'll all agree. I mean. Um, in such a way that if you trace out kind of the bulk, which is my, uh, the bath, then the unitary evolution of the full model will reduce to just my, not lean blood, but just my reduced uh, dynamics for the density matrix for the dynamics at uh, the bulk, okay? And so, uh, the idea is that uh, you can have a situation in which the time translational symmetry breaking takes, care, takes place only at the boundary. Okay? In this picture of bulk boundary, the whole system does not need to break the symmetry, but this hypothetical boundary, which is my system, is the one which breaks the symmetry. So if we accept this, uh, uh, this point of view, uh, if I have uh, another parameter at the bound, defined only at the boundary, which uh, will show persistent oscillation, which emerge only in the thermodynamic limit, so when this, uh, this boundary uh, goes, I mean, the, the number of sides of the boundary goes to infinity, then I think I have the, uh, I think I have the right to, to call it uh, this limit cycle a time crystal. So let me say, it's not a symbol limit cycle, but it's just kind of limit cycle which emerge in the order parameter, okay? Okay. 
look, if for the second time it happens, it will appear, then I will stop giving talks. Yeah. So, so that's, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, my so, dish. Uh, I was just wondering, so uh, in the original papers by the Princeton groups, uh, group, before actually the term uh, Plaquette and Crystal was coined, I think they were actually talking about symmetry protective states with the uh, spin flipping only at the boundary. No, I think that, yes. So is this the same thing? No, this is not the same thing because this is local order parameter. But I, I think that uh, at the same type of thing you, you can get in a topological system. So, okay. so their case was actually symmetry protected topological state, yeah. but in your case, the boundary thing has nothing to do with topology. No, no, it's nothing to do. It's just local order parameter. So, it's the, so I call it boundary. Just as you have to imagine that I have a, a reduced that. It's like having purified my lean blood, uh, lean blood dynamics on a larger Hilbert space. And I call this, my system, the boundary, just to give a visual. But there is no real. So it's not physical. But it does not need to be a physical boundary. How is it related to your order parameter? Yes, in the sense that in the steady, yes, in the sense that steady state, the order parameter does not reach a steady state, but will keep oscillating. Uh -huh. Only yes. In, and in that uh, period, you can use the boundary. Uh, yes. So, uh, so far, this limit cycle. Uh, Probably I will skip this. Uh, uh, these limit cycles were studied at mean field level. And uh, th there are doubts. If uh, mean field is sufficiently uh, good to describe this type of uh, uh, physics, OK? So it may be that this is totally artificial. And uh, if you move slightly away from, uh, from mean field, all this disappears, OK? So basically, now let's, so let me, so for the moment, I, let's accept the fact that uh, a limit cycle, uh, so a limit cycle may be related to um, time crystalline dynamics. So what uh, I'm going to present you is just a simple system that is exactly solvable that has a limit cycle. So at least in this symbol, yet a bit artificial system, then uh, uh, a limit cycle appear. The, the system is very, uh, so it's just a single big spin S, which is coupled to just to a collective type of uh, lean bloodian dynamics. OK? So the steady state has two distinct, distinct phases, one in which, uh, so which are distinct, sorry, because of the average value of uh, sigma z is different from 0, OK? So let me show you the properties of the Limbladian. So I just take the Limbladian and look at the eigenvalues, OK? The, the real part and the imaginary part. The interesting uh, thing is that in this phase where sigma z is equal to 0, there is a gap. While here, the gap, uh, so there is gapless, so the, the first uh, kind of uh, excited uh, Limbladian operators as a real part which goes to zero when the system, uh, when n go, go into infinity. And there is also an interesting thing which is important is that the imaginary part is different from zero. So you get pairs, so you get one, so the, the one eigenvalues, and then you get pairs with, with an imaginary part. Uh, which is uh, finite. Imaginary chi means uh, decay, real yes. part means energy. No, real part means decay, imaginary part oscillation, sorry. OK? So the re real part is, is just the decay part. So the, the frame on the left side of your previous slide is actually uh, more uh, damped. Yes. So this will damp to a steady state with no oscillation. Yes. So, so the two uh, separate by how strong the dissipation is, right? Yes. The yes. So with uh, respect to the splitting. Yes. OK. These are details of the spectrum, which I will skip. Now, the interesting 
thing is that if you look at the oscillation of sigma z, then you see that this oscillation are damped, but then the damping tends to disappear when you go to the thermodynamic limit. Okay? So, and in the, ther in the thermodynamic limit, basically you get persistent uh, oscillations. Okay? So, and you can really, I mean, in the thermodynamic limit, you can solve it uh, exactly, and, uh, but the, the model is so simple that you can really do it, uh, so you can go to huge uh, numbers. And actually, you see that the decay rate of the oscillation uh, disappears, so goes to zero, as one over the number of uh, spins, or the, 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 the length of the, of the spins. So one can go in more details, but then at least you see that uh, in this simple model, uh, many body limit cycle uh, exist, can exist, and uh, uh, if you look at uh, a kind of enlarged Hilbert space, the existence of uh, uh, this many body limit cycle may hint to the fact that only part of the system is, uh, uh, is, does break uh, time translational invariance. So yes. This is, yes, I was about to say, yes. This, so this is an example, so this example is continuous. So because the, uh, the, 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 the dynamics has no explicit time dependence, okay? So the period of, so in a sense, the period of the oscillation is fixed by the couplings, so by omega zero and kappa in this case. The Oshikawa paper that you mentioned, doesn't that prove that it's not? No, here that does not apply because uh, the system does, is not uh, in equilibrium, thermal equilibrium. No, no, we are outside this. So one of the, one of the features of crystalline behavior is rigidity. Well, the rigidity is essentially, I think is essential in the floquet because you are imposing so I think here is rigidity, yeah, yes. So we did it. So, so, um, so there is no, so let me say, the period obviously change if you change parameters. Yeah, fine, but, but there is a, a large, so we just put several perturbation around this, this point and uh, the, this limit cycle phase sort of survives. So it's not a singular point, but we have a region in which in which this uh, time crystalline behavior survives. I ask this because a common question I've run into in distinguishing limit cycle behavior and time crystals is really deep in the rigidity question. So, and so I, I want to understand this a little bit better, but so that yeah, no, no, but say there is a whole region. I, I, I I'll show you. Yes, yes. There is, a large, is a large region. Yes. This one? Yeah. Should that depend on the relative size of your system versus your environment? Yes. Sorry. Uh, yes, you are completely right. I did not mention this. Uh, so I, the limit I have to take is when, so the n uh, of the system, n of the environment going to infinity with a ratio n system divided by n environment going to zero. System. Yes. So, huh? so, so first. It's a very large uh, environment, right? Yes. Like many degrees of freedom. Yes. Which allows you to take the thermodynamic limit. So, it allows me also to have a description in terms of lean blood dynamics. That's, that's crucial. Yes. That's crucial. Yes. Yeah, that's that's crucial. This point, uh, the ratio is important. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I, I think I finished. So, I just. So these are the three points uh, well, I touched, and thank you for the attention.